sustainable harvesters. Uh, what you're standing in is about 12,000 square feet of controlled environment greenhouse space. Uh, in this space, we can grow up to 7,000 heads of lettuce in every week, uh, utilizing growing techniques called aquaponics and this awesome controlled environment greenhouse to protect us from the heat in the Houston summers. So we grow a bunch of different varieties of leafy green lettuces and we distribute that to restaurants and other food service partners all throughout Houston, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, and even in Louisiana, including New Orleans and Baton Rouge. So we grow about 12 different varieties of lettuce and we pack them into our cardboard boxes with seven varieties in each one, a beautiful blend of reds and greens, crunchy and tender from butterhead lettuce to oak leaf to Lola Rosa and even green and red romaine. So really bump our, our differentiating product line uh, where chefs and other food service partners can get a product that they've never seen before um, and a product that has quality and consistency like no other. So we seed all of our lettuce by hand and we start them on these grow trays right here. So this grow tray has 162 spots of a one and one inch cube that we ultimately put one seed in and let them germinate in the dark for about two days. After that time period, they have access to the sunlight. They're gonna grow their first leaf and specifically with lettuce, that first leaf is called a radical. So once they hit that radical stage, we bring them into the sunlight and we ultimately leave them under LED lights for about two to three weeks. When they get to about this size or a little bit younger or a little bit older, we actually bring these trays down to the very back of the greenhouse where each one of these will pop out on a bed of pegs exposing its cubed material. This cube material is made of 99% peat moss with a 1% elastic polymer, giving it a sponge-like effect, allowing us to submerge this root structure into water for the life of the product. So when we put these products in the water, we ultimately have to remove product first. So the first stage in every day is harvesting. We try to harvest in the earlier morning time period because the lettuce does tend to wilt in the summertime during the 11 to four or five o'clock period of time. So we're limited to the morning hours to harvest. When we do harvest in the morning, it's as easy as pulling this entire board out of the water and carefully bringing it to our food um, preparation area where we'll ultimately take each one of these heads of lettuce off of this board by pulling them out, exposing just a few of the bad leaves that might be there. We'll ultimately compost those leaves, leaving this head of lettuce with its roots still attacked. When we put these roots around this, it gives a shelf life of close to three weeks in your refrigerator. Now that's a really big value for our farmer's market patrons that might take it home and not want to eat it that first week and have that access to it the next week. For our restaurant partners, it's not as important, but it still allows that product to be the freshest product in their kitchen because it is still living. Now when we remove these boards, it leaves a space in these grow beds. These are 100 foot grow beds and we stack these every single day. Our entire process is very similar to blockchain. When one thing goes out, one thing will go in at a different area of the system. So when we remove these boards, we ultimately have to seed appropriately because it's a time frame. So those seeds won't be in the water for another two weeks. So we really have to plan on having that product in there and think forward about two to six weeks at all time. Now, when we remove the boards, we leave a gap up in the front and then that allows us to push all the boards towards us here, our harvest area, and stack new boards in the back utilizing our germination cubes. So it's as easy as pushing these back with just one hand. And if you can think of the reverse, we'd be pushing these forward so that we can ultimately harvest this lettuce closer to our clean area. So it really eliminates a lot of the cross-contamination effects. We wear gloves, we wear aprons and hairnets or hats so that there is a very limited chance for any kind of cross-contamination in our system. Now, when there is an opening spot in the back, we'll ultimately have to restock these plants. And it's as easy as pulling these little cubes out, all 162 of them, and simply putting them 
directly in to these raft boards that are made perfectly for those one inch by one inch cubes. Now, when we put those in, we'll fully stock this. This happens every single day so that we're always keeping this grow bed covered. If we were to leave open spot for more than a day, the nutrients in this water would really ignite algae and it would just grow like the lettuce would. It really grows in full force. It's a beautiful algae. I wish we could utilize it for something, um, but in our system, it's not beneficial. It takes away from the nutrients that all the plants are trying to eat. So a little bit more about our process of harvesting and ultimately packing before we get into the science side of aquaponics. So when we move these rafts over to our clean area and we ultimately clean all of that lettuce, wrap the roots, we have to pack it and put it in our cooler right away to crisp it up. So we'll pack it in these trays that we call our transfer trays, ultimately packing one variety in each one of these trays giving us the ability to pack all seven varieties with a couple of these and keep them in our cooler to crisp up. Then it's time to pack our lettuce and make our mixed cases. So it will be as easy as doing one variety at a time, laying out all boxes and just putting the red all in the 10 boxes, then the green and then the red. And so that really keeps the lettuce from being out in the heat for an uh, uh, extended period of time. Everything will be fresh and crisp in our 36 degree cooler space until it's ready to be packed. When they are packed, we'll leave them on the other side of the cooler stacked up and we can fit about 150 boxes in there. And every uh, other day almost, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays, we have distribution companies come to our roll up door pick up the product and ultimately distribute it out to our restaurant partners that might be a little bit further from our reach. We do still keep a loyal small customer base of delivery routes that we personally do, uh, but we limit those to a lot of the restaurants in a very small area. Uh, but we do try and distribute out and promote as many restaurants that we work with with the distribution partners as we can. So that's really the process of moving from seed to harvest in our system. And up next, I think we're gonna really dive into the aquaponics side and what makes this product grow so well in this system. And ultimately the greenhouse that allows us to grow year round, creating a consistent product and ultimately a, a great customer base. So now it's really time to get into the aquaponics side and what makes us different than most traditional growers out there. So the way that we grow all this fresh leafy green lettuce is a combination between two ecosystems in a growing technique called aquaponics. So the basic definition of aquaponics is the combination between aquaculture, raising fish or freshwater fish in a controlled environment and hydroponics, which is growing plants in a soilless environment. So we utilize both ecosystems working together to simultaneously create the nutrients and ultimately remove the nutrients in the form of uptaking and growing their beautiful leafy green leaves. So starting first with the freshwater fish, specifically we use Blue Nile tilapia. And these tilapia come to us all male from a great breeder in New Mexico called AmeriCulture. We get them all male for three really important reasons. First, they create more waste as a male versus a female to create nutrients in our system. Second, they grow much quicker as a male versus a female. And third, and most importantly, they don't reproduce. If they were to reproduce, we would be having tons and tons of small little spawn, get through the filters that we have at the bottom of these tanks, ultimately get into our filtration over on the rock media. And if they were lucky enough, maybe even swim into our grow beds and become really, really hungry vegetarians. They would eat all of our roots until the point that we really wouldn't have a product. Now there are some types of fish that are beneficial in grow beds, um, but we really try and separate these two components the best we can. So these tilapia are the real engine to our motor. They create that nutrient in its raw form called ammonia. And they create that by excreting a waste product after we feed them every day two to three times. So I'm about to feed these guys and they're probably pretty hungry here in the summertime. In the winter, they kind of slow down, but in the summer they are full force, ready and hungry and creating that lean meat that we really like to to create with these tilapia. So we'll feed them real quick 
and see if they're actually excited here. So as these tilapia eat that waste product and ultimately create that waste product, it gets brought down by gravity to the base of these fish tanks. These tanks are equipped with a conical base and that conical base can really help trap a lot of that solids and move it to a lower point in the system, which is our next filtration, our biofilters. These are a simple baffle system that separates out the solids from the liquid ammonia or broken apart ammonia. We can remove almost 50% of all the fish waste in those two tanks and we flush that out once a week to our compost beds, adding a really rich nutrient igniter in that uh, compost bin. So after it removes its 50%, that other 50% of that waste heads down to our second filter we like to call our living filter. This is a ebb and flow, flood and drain rock media bed that raises that water to a certain level and then drains it out quickly, creating aeration and ultimately slowing down the momentum of those solid waste particles so that they can be consumed by naturally occurring bacteria in the system. Not only do we have naturally occurring bacteria helping us out creating that nutrient, every one of these beds is equipped with about four pounds of these red wiggler worms. These red wiggler worms are a great little Roomba in these media beds. They clean out any of the bigger particles that we might have, ultimately that might get clogged in the smaller pipes in our system. They also excrete a supplemental nutrient to this system, ultimately balancing out these grow beds right here so that the water passing below this walkway into our grow beds is clean of any solid debris and just really rich in ammonia and hopefully really high in nitrates, which the plants can ultimately take up in the form of that nitrate and remove it from the system before that water flows directly back to the lowest point in our system where we equipped a pump sending it eight feet directly above so that we can have fresh water going directly to those fish tanks creating a closed loop recirculatory aquaculture system by the scientific definition. So aquaponics really allows you to grow almost any type of vegetable or fruit that you really want to, just have to adapt your system to accommodate for those certain types of crops. Here we have deep water culture, which allows us to really grow a fast moving crop that doesn't need to stay in these beds for too long. It also it limits your growing abilities in that deep water culture to crops that might not be a rooting vegetable or have a really dense amount of roots. So things like carrots, beets, or radishes, or even tomatoes that have to be vined up and are really a long lasting crop would be better suited in those media beds that we just left on the other side of the greenhouse. Now, no matter what you're growing or what type of environment you really have or system, you really have to control the weather in this environment in Houston. We're really hot and humid. It, it gets up into the 105, 110 degrees with almost 100% humidity. So growing these products outdoors is really only limited to the springtime and early win or late winter. So having this greenhouse environment allows us to really trap the heat in the winter and really cool this place down in the summer, utilizing a couple different components throughout the greenhouse. Now, all of these components are really dictated through an environmental control box set with parameters as that temperature raises or lowers. It will turn certain things on in accordance to that temperature gauge so that we're not really always having full force AC coming through here or we're blowing through our heaters. So all of those temperature readings are situated through a sensor hanging throughout the greenhouse and a weather mass outdoors in front of the front door. So those will come into that control box and ultimately turn on the various components that we have. Now, first we'll talk about the winter, a little bit easier to grow here in Houston. In the winter time, we really don't have to warm this place up too much. The only real concern is getting the temperature in the water too cold for the tilapia. If they get below 55 degrees, they're really prone and, and really open to disease and death. So we create an ambient temperature in here that's a little bit higher than its threshold. And we utilize these two 200,000 BTU heaters to turn on 
propanely engaged so that we can only turn those on, raise that temperature just to that threshold, and then they'll turn off. So that we're not wasting a lot of propane or a lot of new, um, um, electricity doing that. So now getting into the harder part of the year, our summertime is really hot here. And so we really have to control the weather to grow throughout the year, all 12 months. And the way we do that is a couple various components that create a wind tunnel through this greenhouse. So on the other side of the greenhouse, we have exhaust fans. We have nine four foot by four foot exhaust fans that will turn on in the morning of a hot day. One by one, as those turn on, a vent on the other side of that brown wall gradually gets larger and larger. So now we're sucking that air from outside through the greenhouse and out the top of the other side, creating almost a wind tunnel that moves that humidity up and out of the greenhouse. Now on a really hot day, we're really just sucking hot air in from outside. So we have to add one more layer to this system to really cool it down to the threshold that this lettuce can really thrive in. And the way we do that is drenching that entire brown wall from top to bottom reservoir and circulating that over and over again until all of those cooling pads are drenched with water. Now that vent on the other side is still open and those exhaust fans are still pulling that air. But now it comes in contact with a very thin stream of water, ultimately evaporating that water and cooling this temperature in the greenhouse down to about 90 degrees, which is our upwards threshold in the hottest days of the summertime. Uh, this allows us to really grow the lettuce year round, but we are still limited in the summertime to harvesting and planting to more early or late hours of the day. Some greenhouses will incorporate shade cloth and that really is dependent on the crop variety that you have. We have ultimately decided not to utilize shade cloth because this lettuce really needs as much sunlight as possible. And through a lot of years of trial and error, we've just found out that with our environment and our product and our system, shade cloth is not appropriate um, for what we're doing here. So that's really how we cool and heat this place up to grow a product year round, creating some consistency in the market and really boosting our credibility to the chefs and the patrons at our farmers markets throughout Texas and Louisiana. So not only is this system sustainable, but it's really efficient on labor. And we've incorporated a very simple way of harvesting, seeding, and planting so that you can really minimize the expense of labor and really maximize your profits. This entire greenhouse can be run with 7,000 heads of lettuce per week with just two people operating it. So one efficiency here is planting. And so these cubes that we talked about earlier come in one inch by one inch square, coconut core and elastic polymer cubes. Now these guys are perfectly sized to be pushed, put and placed into our grow boards. So by putting it on a bed of pegs, I can ultimately pop all of these cubes out and very simply grab them, maybe six at a time, two by two if you're not so skilled, and start plugging away. So we'll start planting these and we go by variety and we can really do about four and a half trays or grow boards and rafts per cube tray. And so we'll do about four or five per cube tray and, and we really try and time how much we harvest to how many seeds we have ready to go as well. So usually we'll have excess seeds ready to go so that if something bad happens or if we harvest a lot of one variety, let's say butterhead goes in really popular for the Easter holiday or for any kind of different holiday at our farmer's market, we might have gone through a lot more of that. We can ultimately have some backup so that we're ready to put them into our system when they need to. So when we put our first tray in, we always date and label that with the variety of lettuce and ultimately the date that we're putting it in here. We also have the date that we germinated it and this all goes back into those Google Forms so that we can really track production and see how many weeks it's taking us to get a head of lettuce from the back of the grow bed all the way to the front of the grow bed. So as I mentioned earlier, it's as easy as stacking them in the back and pushing them forward to place this lettuce where its appropriate spot is. So we'll push those all the way forward 
keep stacking these until this entire grow bed is full and so that we have a nice blanket of insulation to keep that cool temperature in the water and uh, limit the amount of algae growth in this system. We do have a difference between aqua and hydro. And so aqua utilizes freshwater fish as our nutrient base. Hydroponic, like we have these tomatoes growing right here, is actually solely uh, chemical based or you add your soluble nutrients and ultimately distribute them the same way that you would do in aquaponics, but it doesn't fully get recirculated. And so you ultimately have to keep adding those nutrients once every two weeks or so and keep draining that body of water to replenish those nutrients. So it's not as sustainable. Uh, it's very difficult to get organic for that. Um, and it is a very efficient and future way of, of doing it much like this, uh, but we, we ultimately like to utilize the sustainability features of aquaponics. Landio, land is opportunity.